Hi, this is Brian Fogarty, and this is a video for Chapter 8 of the book Quantitative Social Science Data with R, 2nd edition. So in this video, what we're going to do is look at creating bar plots with two variables. So in the previous video, we looked at a single variable doing a bar plot. This time, we're going to look at uh, two variables. So normally, when we use two variables in a bar plot, um, the second variable is often a nominal level variable. Uh, it doesn't have to be. It can be. It can be. It can be ordinal level as well. Um, but you'll see that it, if the second variable has a lot of values, it can start getting kind of crazy. So in this video, we're going to do is we're, we're going to kind of put everything all together at once. I know it's a whole bunch of stuff. Um, so we're going to go through it slowly. All right. So we're going to need a, uh, another package here called scales. All right. So this package is going to allow us to add percentages to the y axis because in ggplot, they don't make it very easy to do that. Um, by default, it's just count and count, you know, it's great, but people don't necessarily understand counts as well as percentages. Well, I mean, it depends on what you're looking at. All right, so what we're going to do is we are going to, again, plot VF problem on the x-axis, but actually the one that we created up here, VF problem 1 on the x-axis, and we are going to plot it by uh, vote, so, sorry, vote 2017 dumb. So just to remind us what that looks like. So let's take a... Oh, we're going to look at this here using the count function. Uh, this is vote. Right. All right. So this is from um, how the respondents voted in 2017, uh, the, the 2017 UK Parliament election. So if they voted for the Conservative Party, they're a winner. If they voted for a different party, they're a loser. And then NA is did not vote. All right, so that's going to be our second variable. Okay, so let's let's get started here. We're going to do this a little different than we did previously. We're going to start with the data. So we're going to do VF England, and then use piping, and then so ggplot plots missing values uh, by default. So we actually want to get rid of them. In the VF problem one, we don't have any. But this, this one, as we see, we do have one for, for vote 2017 dumb. So we want to filter those out. So we're going to do filter and an exclamation is an A and then vote 2017 dumb. Okay. All right. So then we're going to go to the next line and then we're going to include ggplot. And we're going to leave that empty because we've already declared what the data is up here. So we're going to do ggplot plus, we'll use geom bar again, which is for bar plots. We're going to do mapping equals AES. Okay, um, we're going to specify our x-axis. So the x equals VF problem 1. So that's the variable that's going to be on the x-axis. Okay, so using the scales package, what we're going to do, or scales with ggplot, for the y, what we're going to do is use this option here. So dot, dot, period, period, full stop, full stop, prop, dot, dot. So that gives us a proportion, which is converted to percentage. I'm going to pull this back a little, just so we have a little more room. And then we're going to use group. So group equals 2000, sorry, vote 2017 underscore dumb. So using this, what this will do is that it will break up our, um, the values on vote 2017 dumb for each value of VF problem one. And it's going to, um, add them up so that the bars we get for each of the, the groups of, of vote 2017 dumb will add up to a hundred percent. All right. We also are going to include fill equals vote 
oh, sorry, <laughs> 2017 underscore dumb. And then we're going to use stat equals count in quotations. I know this is this is very convoluted. So so in in the chapter we actually use a series of steps to get to build up to this. Um, I know it's it's kind of complicated here. And then the last thing we're going to do in in the geom bar specification is we're going to change the position. We're going to do position equals dodge. And so what that will do is that it, it will break up the bars so that they're next to each other uh, for each value of VF problem one. Uh, by default, what ggplot does is that it stacks the values so that it's kind of the colors or chunks go up. Um, using dodge is a better way because it's easier to see um, um, the relative sizes of it. The only situation where you probably wouldn't want to use dodge is if uh, you have a lot of values on that other variable because then the, the plot will be ginormous and you won't be able to distinguish it. Okay, so that's all well and good. That is our main um, specification here. Okay, next what we're going to do is we're going to add labels because well, let's, let's just take a look actually. I'm going to Let's just run this without anything else. Okay, so we don't have <laughs> anything here. Um, meaning that you could see how it's it's set up right now. Okay, sorry, there was something that caught my, my eye and I was like, what's going on? I realized that we actually, you could see we got this error here. It says unknown aesthetics, stat, and position. It's because I put them in the wrong spot. It helps to make sure you have them in the right spot. Um, what we need here is actually a closed parenthesis. Um, I messed that up. And I should have known because in the AES you're specifying or we, we're specifying our variables. Um, so count or, or setting the stat and position are not our variables. They're options that we're including within the geom bar. Um, function here. So let's try it again. Let's see if we still get that error. Okay, that's a little better. So I'm not going to pop it out, but you can see here um, we have the dodging, which is those the bars next to each other, and we have our y-axis right now, which is just prop in these decimals. Um, we're going to we're going to fix that. All right. We're going to add our labels, um, which is labs. It's the function. Okay, and then th this is just text. So we're going to set the x-axis as voter fraud, a serious problem. Outside the, the quote, we're going to do comma and then title. All right, uh, so this is the overall title on the plot. Uh, voter fraud beliefs and 2017 vote. And then comma fill equals 2017 election. You can call it whatever. I mean, there's no right. You, know, you want it to be clear, but there's no like perfectly right way. Um, what this does to fill is that it's going to it's going to replace this over here where it says vote 2017 underscore dumb. It will replace that with this with 2017 election. And then the Y um we are going to include percent all right notice something right like i started the x and then titled and filled and y um i should probably i should probably order it in a better way from like biggest to smallest but uh it doesn't it doesn't matter the ordering doesn't matter okay i'm going to do plus and then we're going to uh work on our our axes here i'm going to do scale underscore x underscore discrete okay so this this function is an option when your x-axis has discrete values or categorical values all right we what, what we're going to do is instead of the the values for vf problem one being next to each other in the way they are just completely sort of flat next to each other 
we're going to turn them so that they're on an angle of, of 45 degrees. All right, so to do that, we're going to do guide equals guide underscore axis, and then angle equals 45. All right, so that will change again so that the labels on VF problem one are in a 45 degree angle. And then we're going to change our y axis here to scale y continuous. And we're going to do labels equal percent format and then uh, parentheses, but it's going to be empty. Okay, so what that does is that it converts this part that's, that's prop here with the points to percentages. So it will multiply them by 100 and add a percentage sign automatically. And then the last thing is we're going to change the overall theme. And that the overall theme we're going to change to is minimal. Uh, minimal is a very commonly used one because it's, it's just real basic. Um, so it allows us to, sh to see the plot easier. Why is there... All right, let's see. Let's see if it gets... Oh, the minimal we need. There we go. <laughs> All right, so let's hope this works. I'm going to highlight that and run that. And it's unused. Why is it unused? Because I spelled it wrong. There we go. All right, it's good to spell things correctly. Okay, I'm going to click on that. And we see now this is the plot that we get. Um, so we can, um, you know, looking at this, we can kind of try to figure out like what's going on, uh, how it's split up. So we might say that, you know, for winners, it seems like there's uh, people that were winners have a higher uh, or, or more strongly agree are more likely to agree that voter fraud is a serious problem than losers, which is actually counterintuitive. Um, but it's bec because of the conservative ideology aspect. All right. Um, now, if it's not obvious, it should already be obvious that there's a ton of different options that you can do. There's so many different options and uh, ggplot, the, the website has Ton, it ha already has tons of stuff, and then it has um, extensions you can do. So you are most likely be able to find a combination of everything to make a plot exactly how you want it. Uh, this, what I do here is just change it to grayscale. All right, so we click on that. Things are grayscale now. All right, so that's it uh, for this video. Again, we just we, we kind of went from most basic in the previous video to a whole bunch of stuff at once here um with doing with doing um bar plots with two variables all right so thanks for watching and i'll see you next time